Trouble on my mind. So I'm bidding farewell, putting in my notice, and I'll see you out another time. See. This highway does, does not, not know my name, and I don't care. Who mm -mm. I, I don't. don't care. Head in my way for another, another place, and I got. Right to the hook, right here. Just a white line gypsy getting out of Mississippi with just enough gas to get there. Low budget. Live. The not so live variety from the low. The actual live variety. Sorry. I get used to saying crap, people. This is actually live from the low budget live barn grill. Sorry. It's been a it's been a day. It's been a Monday. Uh, Daniel Lomax Fisher, we're starting off the show with a with a bang. He said, let's go see you at the Classic. And yes, he's yelling at the screen. I hope to see a lot of you at the Bassmaster Classic. And this is a very, very um, Bassmaster Classic-ish episode. So welcome all you low lifers. I see y'all starting to stack up in here. I apologize for not having one for you today, but we're going to do it tonight. We will uh, we'll all get together and enjoy this thing as it actually goes down. So uh, looking forward to seeing everybody. First things first, I do have to say that it is Classic Week. I made a video today, and every year of my life when I do events, whether it was when I was playing music or when I do these classic parties, whatever you want to call it, it, it is always you are nervous, right? And, and the week of, because you're like, maybe nobody shows up, right? And we've never had that problem. <laughs> a little budget live, live. Almost too many folks show up every single time. Uh, they're so much fun, man. This will be our fourth throwdown. The low lifer get together. But in Tulsa, Oklahoma, Saturday night, March the 23rd. If you're around 7 p.m. ish, the Hunt Club, I am going to try to also stream it for those of you that can't be there because I know not everybody's going to be in Tulsa but we are going to be hanging out at the hunt club I have assembled a group of uh <laughs> of musicians uh fat cat Newton has dubbed them the fat rascals so Luke Duncan and the fat rascals but we are uh, we're gonna play some full band tunes for you there hopefully my mic cable's better there than it is here in the bar and grill uh but I but I appreciate uh all you low lifers, I'm seeing y'all in the comments. What's up, Andre, the Wisconsin low lifer? He had the shirt of the classic last year, indeed. Uh, yeah, yeah, Kenny Watek. So, how big were the crowds at Redcrest? I actually did. I'm going to get to that. I'm going to get to that. I, I did go to Redcrest on Friday and walk around there, and uh, we will def damn sure get to that. But uh, great guest tonight will be on with us here in a little bit. And like I said earlier today on the video, it is a former Bassmaster Classic champion. It's his first time on this show. So I'm really looking forward to that. But I appreciate each and every one of y'all tuning in tonight. Uh, I, I do have I do have uh, some Tito's in this cup tonight, as a matter of fact, uh, right there in the Tennessee case. It's, it's March Madness time. We didn't show up and show out in that SEC tournament, guys. But uh, it's March Madness. We start playing this weekend. I think Thursday we play. All right, you low lifers. Let me thank some sponsors real quick because uh, they are what makes this world go round. That and the low lifers, right? So let's uh, let's do the thing. This episode is brought to you by the folks at Fish Tips, FishTips.com. Very very cool people. I, I finally got to meet all of them in person at Redcrest for a little bit, but they are doing neat things over there. There are a lot of uh, a lot of very talented anglers posting their tips, giving advice on there. And for me, it is a really neat platform if, you know, I fish with my kids a lot. Y'all know that. And I don't necessarily want to hire a guide, but if I was in an area that I'm not very familiar with, it would be cool to get like a general idea 
of where I need to go. And there's anything from really general tips on there to really specific. They range at different prices, but there are some absolute studs that post uh, a lot of goings on in the fishing world on their fishtips.com gillfishing.com y'all know the deal lbl gift if you spend 100 bucks at gill fishing is going to absolutely get you this awesome uh voyager dry bag right now lbl gift at gillfishing.com proguybatteries.com they got a new charger several new chargers out i got to see those for the first time at red crest they do some incredible things they'll actually wake your batteries up their batteries have that technology built in, but this charger will actually wake your batteries up. All these lithiums, they can go to sleep when it gets cold, different things. Their chargers do that. They have a built-in fan that's incredible. Uh, they walk me through the entire thing. They have a five-bank charger, which is kind of a big deal now with all the electronics, but proguidebatteries.com, you can use code LBL10 there. Bait-works.com. Look right here. I should have brought the new one. Uh, we're releasing a color at the Classic. We're calling it Rooster. And I should have done a better job and had one to show all you low lifers, but it'll be available in the Baitworks booth. I will be in the Baitworks booth a lot, the classic as well. You can use code Duncan-10 at bait-wrx.com to save money. And last but not least, hang the imaginary banner that's not going to be here because I don't have the graphics when I do live. But Express Boats, Hot Springs, Arkansas, we will be doing a podcast in the Express Boats booth at 1 p.m. on Saturday. Express, come come pretend you're driving that X21. They got a new boat that's going to show up there. I've been hearing. I'm not going to announce it here, but there's a new boat. I'm not going to tell you the model. But there's a new Express in town. It's going to be a bad dude, and it's going to be at the Bassmaster Classic. But come say hi. I'll be around there this weekend as well. But at 1 p.m., we're doing a live there. There's going to be some giveaways, some cool guests. 1 p.m. at the Classic Expo. All right, moving on. Thank y'all. Let's see. The new color smashed them on the Kusa. Yeah. So Noah Dickinson, shout out Noah, photographer extraordinaire for the Alabama Bass Trail. And he did indeed get a couple of those new rooster LOBs. And it's good to hear. Thanks, Noah. Thanks for the feedback on that. All right. Here we go. Low lifers. Red Crest was dull. Okay. We'll start with that. First of all, congrats to Dustin Connell. He is absolutely a freak of nature. Y'all, y'all know I'm a Dustin fan. He is, uh, he is just something else, man. And to win on your home lake, especially with that format, right? Because you got to just pour on the gas. His strategy was incredible all week. It looked like, you know, a couple of days I was like, man, is he, is he, uh, is he going to make it? Is he going to, you know, make it, make it through? And it was like, he just played it all so absolutely perfect. And then poured on the gas yesterday. It was really cool, man, to see him, uh, I hate that there aren't bigger moments with MLF, and, and I've talked about that on the show a lot as far as, like, no way in right? And there aren't a lot of people at the at the celebrations because it is odd that that you – the tournament ends, you know, you know, obviously everything is known all day long, but I always think you're missing those moments. And and it was it was just him, his official, and his camera guy. But it still – I watched it. Uh, I got to say I wanted to see the end. I saw he was up so much. And to hear him get emotional and and – to hear the stories he was telling about growing up there. It was, it was a special deal, man. And so shout out to DC. He's won, uh, you know, only 400 grand out of three tournaments so far this year. Second time winning their championship, the red crest there and, um, dominating win on the last day. Shout out to little Alton, Alton Jones jr. For coming in second again, Alton again, again. And I know, uh, Alton said, he smashed him. He's like, I thought if I caught over 50 pounds that I would surely to God be winning this thing. But I, he, he unfortunately didn't. So, uh, I did, uh, I did go though. I did, did go down to the red crest. I had a meeting there that I had to go to and no, it wasn't with any MLF brass. I did see several of my old FLW family members there that still work for the organization. A lot of, and y'all hear me say that a lot. There's a lot of fantastic people in that organization that have worked for FLW for many, 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 many years. And uh, I got to see several of them, several of them on, uh, on Friday. And it was always good to see them and hug their necks. And they, uh, they are just great people, great people. Um, but yeah, I, I would say, you know, the show had a lot of vendors, a lot of stuff going on, but it was a big, uh, you know, I would say this was the reaction of everybody on Friday. There's a lot of that right there, right? 
it was all, all you know, it, there wasn't a lot going on. Um, wasn't a lot going on at all. And man, I, I've seen, I've been to a lot of shows. Y'all know that. I've worked a lot of Forestwood Cups. I've been to a ton of classics working and, and as a fan since I was a kid, work, worked my fair share of shows, all sorts of shows, whether it's East Tennessee fishing show or different boat shows, whatnot. It was a miserably slow, slow Friday when I was there for a crowd. Um, I talked to a lot of vendor friends of mine. Nobody's happy about it. I, I don't on that front, you know, did it get better through the weekend? I'm not sure. You know, you, you have to speak to that on Saturday, Sunday. There was a lot going on in Alabama this weekend, but, but it's not the classic, man. It's just not. And I, I saw a friend of mine made a post and he called it the diet classic. He said, I went to the diet classic and, and I hate that it's not bigger than it is for the anglers involved. I really do. Did they choose to go that route? Million percent. Y'all know my feelings on all of it. I, I've talked about it for a lot, a long time. Uh, I'm sure Dustin doesn't care how many people were there or weren't there, right? But I think for the overall health of the organization and that event, it's just not. It's it's not catching fire, man. You don't see the people that travel and the classic got a 40 year head start. Don't get me wrong, or whatever the case is. How many numbers? How many classics? But man, it's uh, it's crazy that people just don't really give a damn. Like they don't, they don't. And, and I'm sure uh, if some of y'all were there, y'all can speak in the comments here. I'm just kind of getting, getting caught up here, but uh, um, you know, it's, it's just sad. It's sad. What I saw Friday was sad. And I don't know how many chances you get to get that right because this was the, whatever one, you know, they had one at lacrosse Wisconsin years ago and it was, you know, really slow and kind of, you know, and then they decided not to have it for a while and they started having it. And, um, you know, it's, it's, it's just, it's not catching fire. And I've been, like I said, a lot of forest wood cups on Fridays were very, very, very busy, very busy, especially in a town like Birmingham, right? Where you get so many fishermen. So not sure how it was, um, Saturday, Sunday, like I said, a lot of good vendors there to pull people in. There was a lot, you know, a lot of cool booths. And uh, I don't know, man. I, I'm, I'm, it was, it was, it was interesting to, for my first time. The show, as far as how it was set up, really cool, really cool layout. It just ain't the classic, man. And, you know, and, and look, it's not fair to compare it to that, I guess, but they bring that on themselves because they say the fishing championship event of the year on social media. It's the dumbest 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 thing you could ever do you are tone deaf if that's your take on it the fishing championship event of the year like stop it with that like stay in your lane have a nice event for your anglers hope people show up quit flexing all the time that's the problem it's the ego within that organization that just makes it easy to go <laughs> don't really care and i think the and i think obviously i'm seeing in the comments i think the fans believe that as well and and i had a you know i had an angler I was talking to today that that fishes over there. And that's another thing I would say. I talked to several anglers and guys that were just um guys that were just devout about this thing, right? And passionate just a few years ago. That's gone. It is gone. And and somebody may tell you that's not the case. There are about five or ten of them that 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 might not be the case for. But trust me, an overwhelming majority of those people are without question not happy to be there they just don't know what to do they don't know they don't know what to do so anyway uh <laughs> meanwhile boyd is still talking about bass on his new podcast yeah glad he's got a podcast i'm glad i won't ever have to watch it <laughs> i do think it's funny he's got one he's like hey let me defend all this dumb stuff that i do on my podcast um He's not a dumb person. Understand that. Boyd is very smart. He he wants people talking about it. Uh, MLF doesn't have that sump fishing with Bam. Some of the best videos on the IG and the TikToks. I'm sure I don't do TikTok fishing with Bam. I'm sure you're there. MLF doesn't have the something to lose factor as all other tournaments. Interesting. I like I like that's a I like that statement. What's well, red crest? And look, like I said, um, man. Dustin Connell sitting somewhere right now counting his money. He's good. He doesn't care. He is. It was an emotional win for him. I, you know, my buddy Jesse Wiggins did well in it. Like I was pulling for those dudes. It's still a bass tournament with big money on the line and coverage. And I know what they all go through 
to try to get there and win it. It's not freaking easy. It's not. So for the anglers, I feel bad that the event is not bigger, but I, I don't know what it takes. Uh, I don't know what it takes. And I did just, uh, as worldwide calls it red breast. Um, did I protest Matt Lee? <laughs> yeah, I got to tell that story, I guess. Matty Lee. So Matt Lee joined us at the Alabama Bass Trail <laughs> uh, for coverage this week because Jason Duran, shout out to my buddy Jason, he had to work Red Crest for Phoenix Boats. And, uh, and, and so Matt Lee joined us, did a great job on Alabama Bass Trail Live. And after we got back, to uh smith lake dam there we had a we had a couple hours before the weigh-in and i said man let's uh let's let's have a tournament let's fish right here and there was a very tiny smidge of off limits of course i'm not going to be out there there's 225 boats trying to win 15 grand plus i'm not going to go running around in the express and try to uh you know get in anybody's way and so me and uh brenton long my camera guy we got in my boat uh and you can see right here Noah Dickinson was also in the tournament. He was fishing solo and uh, he did get beat. I'm just saying we only caught one, but we won. Uh, Brenton caught it. I didn't catch it and I lost two, but, but Noah was in the tournament and then Matt Lee and Matt was just steady, just trying to throw over my line. So yeah, I posted that up on Instagram and uh, I did not protest him to Miss K, but we did, we did have a good time as we always do at the Alabama Pass Trail. Um, but Noah, Noah, Noah will fish in that off limits, man. He'll get after him in that off limits. But uh, we would like to have been running around the whole lake because those bass were biting. Um, let's see. Good times. Please tell us Watson is on tonight. No, no James, no Jamesy tonight. Look forward to maybe seeing him at the classic, though. Okay, maybe uh, a little bit low budget live, 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 live at the classic. Just uh, be on the lookout for some worldwide. I'm trying to put that together, but not tonight. Tonight we got a classic champ, man. It's uh, I'm really excited about. It. He's going to join us just here, um, here in just a little bit. Uh, let's go through some comments. Y'all are y'all are <laughs> three live scope beams equals radioactive fish. Noah did make a good point. We were all live scoping each other <laughs> in the off limits there at Smith Lake Dam. And those suckers were swimming as fast as they could away from us. It was just a lot of, uh, a lot of, it's like a, a virtual sword fight. <laughs> it was not good. Uh, and there were just fish darting everywhere, which way. Um, GTO has a new podcast coming out. Uh, Gunners will tackle. Yeah. Somebody, somebody else told me that. Um, Somebody else told me about that. Scott Ezel, uh, work your ass off to have your weight zeroed is stupid. Yeah, I don't disagree with that at all. But I think in their every fish matters format or whatever, I think that's the only way you can really do it. Because then somebody's just going to make it interesting. Because if you don't, somebody's going to catch 374 pounds over three days. Uh, I couldn't even do the math on that, on how many bass that would be. But uh and and they're just going to run off with it. So I think as long as they're doing that format, they've got to do that. Uh, but I also think that, and look, in five fish tournaments, people can run away with things, obviously. Like we saw that at the MPFL Championship. Uh, Brandon Perkins ended up winning by 15 pounds, right? Like we had to call that one early on Showdown Saturday, the final day. But that being said, people still have a chance in a five fish format. And I, and I saw a lot of comments where people were like, yeah, DC's got too big of a lead. I'm not watching. And I found myself in that same boat. I just, I truly, I turned it on. I saw how big of a lead he had. And then I came back towards the end just because I do enjoy seeing that reaction, seeing, I know how hard, like I said, these guys work. And I wanted to see that. I knew it was special for DC at home. Um, he told the story about his, his brother and him fishing so much on that lake as a kid, his mom dropping him off in a canoe. Like Dustin is one of those guys that, that he didn't have a silver spoon growing up. You see a lot of comments about the young pros out there and, and Dustin's a veteran now. Uh, but man, I've known him since he was a young dude and he's just been after it. He puts in the time. He absolutely slays them all the time. And it's just pretty damn cool to see. And it won't be his last win of this year. I would, I would dare say, but between him and Jacob, they've gone uh, three for three. It's insane to see, man. And crush city. Can we talk about like, and, and obviously hard work goes in and it's not luck at all, but dude, also how lucky are you? If you're a rapple of crush city, <laughs> these guys are just smashing on these baits. Uh, it, it's insane. 
Billy Bass, what was the deal with Chris Lane and his boat official? I have no idea. I didn't watch enough of it. I didn't watch enough of it to know that kind of stuff. I, I have uh, um, no clue on that, Billy. No clue. Um, what's up, Chuck from East Tennessee? By the way, FBD, that is true. Um, Luke, I can't believe you were in my backyard and on Smith and didn't want to go smash some spotted bass. Well, I can't, I can't because, uh, when I'm working for Alabama Bass Trail, I'll try not to go out there on the water and with a rod and reel that doesn't, uh, I'll get in trouble. Miss Kale, Miss Kale will be, uh, not happy about that. Randy Blockett is the guest. <laughs> Randy Blockett is the guest tonight. He is a classic champion in his own mind coming in from brother Ben. Yes, indeed. He is a uh, champion of the world in his own mind. Uh, but he is definitely not the guest tonight. Duck it on the announce. You're fishing the Doid bucket fishing league next year. <laughs> y'all are on a, y'all are on one tonight. I like it. All right. Let's, uh, let's go with, uh, let's go with some classic picks who y'all got. I want to know who y'all got in the comments. Cause I, I'm going to give you mine. I've already done this before on the show, obviously the last couple of weeks, but I keep kind of changing my mind a little bit, but I, I do, I think we got to get a, uh, I think we got to get, uh, Luke Palmer on the list for the classic. All right. I'm going to go Luke Palmer. I'm going to go Ben Milliken and, uh, I think you got to go Jason Christie. Those are my three. I'm going Milliken, Luke Palmer, and Jason Christie. Lock those in. All right. Uh, Fat Cat Newton, because he's won two in the same year. Of course, 87 back-to-back. Uh, politics, keep him out of it now. Ty Williams as a dark horse? Okay. Okay. Tyler Williams as a dark horse? Listen, I like that. I like that young man. Want to have him on here after the classic. John Cox. Okay, Milliken. Kento will win. Okay. Listen, dude, that's not a bad pick. When Ronnie Moore was on here, I was going to say, Kenta lives close, and that dude is an animal. He had a top five that the last time there was a, an open there. He, uh, he had a top five. But that's not a bad pick. Not a bad pick at all. Jason Christie, Greg Hackney, and Talk could, could be... Yeah, I totally agree with this this take right here from Jeff Grope. Could be a rookie open winner the way those guys are fishing, honestly, wide open this year. For years, it was really thought, though, and this is the same with just all, all the major tournaments, was that a rookie really didn't have a chance in the Classic, but you're, you are a million percent right. More so than ever, you got the Kyle Patricks that won an event that are in there, the, the Tyler Williams that are in there. So many young anglers in this thing this year and they're already having success Milliken they're already uh having success of course Milliken's a little older than those guys but um they're already having success at the elite level so that that kind of the butterflies are gone I would think now the classic's a different ball game we all know we all know that but I still think you're definitely right on that take we could see uh we could see a rookie take this thing home Hank Cherry. Yeah, Hank Cherry came really close. The first time I ever met Hank Cherry was at the Grand Classic that uh, Cliff Pace won, and he and he lost the fish that he would have won. Um, I know, Ryan Branch, dude, you are not wrong on that too. See, Easton uh, Fothergill right there. I'm telling you right now, ladies and gentlemen, I had that young man on this show. He is far and away as impressive as it gets. Would not shock me. I was actually one of his roommates as my, one of my, my camera op with me we get paired up brenton long and at the abt's another great young man and great young fisherman but dude i think father gill is uh super under the radar for a lot of people but man that young man can fish and those montevallo guys just catch them period we saw that with dalton head during red crest as well so good picks come in taller if a rookie wins randy block it will blow his top tyler williams coming in i like it trying to keep up with the comments here there we go right there if a rookie wins randy block it will blow his top that's a fact that's his fire we're ruining it all with the live scope he'll make 72 videos during the class he'll call them cheaters and everything else listen i've called people out for cheating but they was actually cheating what they're doing is all well within the rules 
Kyle Welcher, golly, there's too many people to pick. And I like so many of those guys that it's hard for me to uh, settle in on one. Y'all are killing me with all these names. I want Ben to win just to piss Randy off. I don't think Trey is in right now. <laughs> Trey, Trey forgot his insurance all the time. Trey, little Trey is not in there. Um, Trey McKinney, you mean. I'm sorry. I thought you meant Honey Bun, Trey Swindle. No, he's not in the class. He's going to be a low budget live live, though. Trey Swindle will be. A little Honey Bun will be there. <laughs> what weight will win? Hmm. Andrew Browning. Um, I'm going to go 58 pounds. I'm going to write that down so I remember it. 58 pounds for three days. Grand's a funny one, dude. I fish Grand a bunch. And uh, it's got some really big fish, but it fishes weird sometimes. Very, very weird. 73, Brian. Okay, he says 73, 13. Come on with it. Okay. Another Crush City win with Kyle Welcher. Potential's there. Trust me, anytime that boy goes out swinging the bat, he could hit a grand slam. He is uh, he is an absolute dude. There's no, no doubt about it. Have I seen... Have, you, have I seen the KGP over 60 grand? Okay, Brandon lives out there in that part of the world. Over 60, so we're going 20 a day. I, I mean, and dude, you know like I do, it's got the potential for that. I just feel like something always happens to keep it from being that way uh, in most things. But but I think weather wise, it could definitely uh, it could definitely take take that for sure. Well, I appreciate y'all all throwing out there. Rick Klein and Michelle Thomason coming in. Cody Huff, a pick coming in. Absolutely. Uh, I will, Nick, I will be doing, before we get our guest on, I will be doing my live show. I'll be doing one at the Express Boats booth at 1 p.m. on Saturday and then on the 23rd. And then that night at the Hunt Club, we will do being doing a live podcast, playing music, and just all the low lifers getting together. Okay. So uh, be there or be square, as the kids say. I don't think the kids say that anymore. Um, weather going downhill on Sunday. I hope it don't go downhill on Saturday. I don't care if they got to deal with bad weather fishing. <laughs> it's my selfish a selfishness. I've not looked at uh, I've not looked at it, but man, I hope that's not the case. That is for sure. Our guest has actually uh, popped up in the queue here, and I'm going to uh, let me read off some stat lines here just real quick. I got I got to read this. So I met this guy. He is one of my. I feel like I say this a lot. Y'all hear me say this, but th this is true. This is the first professional fisherman that I ever got to know as a kid. And I got to, got to meet him through a, a mutual friend of, of ours. And dude, he was all I ever wanted to be for sure, for good reason. And he represented himself well, but he fished the way I like to fish. And I met him. I was probably 12 years old. I'm going to make him feel old when we get on here. Um, he's, he's almost ready here, but He's won over $2 million, $2 million in career earnings over his career. He's got five wins, 50 top 10s, 81 top 20s. He is an absolute legend to me. And we are coming up on right now, right now, his 10-year anniversary of winning the Bassmaster Classic, ladies and gentlemen, low lifers of all ages, Randy Howell joining What's us happening? live What's in person on Low What's Budget Live. What's up, buddy? How are you? I'm doing great. How are you doing? I'm doing good. Can everybody hear Mr. Randy Howell out there? I know y'all can. Y'all let us know, but I'm, I know I can. I still got it. Still got an expo hangover from the last three days. A hangover <laughs> talking so much to so many people I hadn't seen in years. <laughs> well, um, listen, that that's what I, that's what I said at the uh, at the first of the show. I saw so many people there at the expo, just friends of mine that work for different companies. I re you were the first person I ran into, so I got to tell this real quick, Randy. The way this happened to get him for LBL was. I walked right into him as soon as we both got there before we even got into the convention center. And I said, Hey, we're coming up on the classic. We're coming up on your anniversary. Let's, let's do a show. So I appreciate you uh, joining me, buddy. And listen, there's already comments about the, the haircut is immaculate. 
He has had that haircut. I met him when I was 12 years old. That was many moons ago. I like making Randy feel old. He remembers, yeah. remember, he was a little chubby kid asking him for fishing advice years and years ago. And he's had that haircut ever since. Yeah, I've had that haircut for a while, man. Since I was like uh, 15 years old or so, I, I got it. Uh, I, was, I went to a Christian school, the quick story on my haircut, but I don't know about it. Christian school. I was a rebellious kid and went, my mom dropped me off at the barber shop and I taught her, you know, I, I was going to get a haircut that everybody else was getting. And I got to come out and I had a, a V, I had straight hair and I had a V and a rat tail in the back. Remember the old rat tail days for those yeah. people in, in the uh, late eighties, early nineties, that was like 1988, probably I graduated in 91. And so uh, about that time she took me back to school and, uh, they took me right to the principal's office the next morning, called her up, come back to get me. And she took me back to the barbershop. They cut it all off. And all they could do was make a flat top out of it. And that's how it started because I had a, uh, had a rat tail that might send me to hell. They thought at my Christian school at the time. <laughs> <laughs> so that's how that started. And, uh, Man, so I've had that that <laughs> <laughs> I wonder uh, what they think about. At that same school today, what they think about these kids rocking the mullets. Mullets are fashionable now, Randy. I know. That's exactly right. All that stuff's fashionable now. You know, most of the schools are all good with them. That school actually went out of business later on down the road. It ain't even there anymore. So that, okay. that was probably a good sign that that was what happened because of doing stuff like that. <laughs> uh, That's amazing. I, but now we did both. Well, buddy, I, I appreciate you so much because we've never done the podcast. I was about to say we... We did Boats and Pros. It was one of my favorite ones that I've ever got to film with you. And even knowing you like I've known you personally for so many years, I, and I've considered you a friend and a mentor, man, uh, I've always just just appreciated the heck out of you. And you've given me advice at times in life. And and especially, I used to bug you a lot. When I was a young man, I would bug Randy Howe. I'd be like, all right, Randy, uh, <laughs> what, what do I need to do with this, 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 and this, and this? And he was always uh, so gracious, man. But never had you on lbl so i'm glad you're here and we're live with these folks man just they are commenting they said the old livingston uh, the old livingston dt10 they said no it was a howler dude come on yeah. a little, hey nothing was ever hidden it was all told the truth i, I caught him on a dt6 first thing in the morning caught 20 pounds and i'd have finished a nice fifth or sixth place with that dt6 wouldn't never won the class right. but when i changed up to the livingston after they quit biting up there shallow and I caught the first time and I caught them on that. And that's what I ended up catching and culling everything except that one seven pounder on. So I, I went on, it was, at, it was documented. We always got haters out there. Oh, yeah. out there and say, I, hey, I went on the show with, I was on the show with Zona on Bassmaster and showed the baits and told him and gave her pal off straight up props and love for it all. Didn't get no, didn't get nothing for it, but I did it, and I told all the truth about it. So anybody that goes back and looks at old YouTube stuff, they'll see it was all told true in Dr. Walker. I remember, I remember that old big one with that Livingston just choked. I'll never it forget that. One. That's where yeah. it came from. Right? Right. It was just part That's of right. it was just part of the miracle of time, and you know how just how the Lord let everything work out to have the miracle of catching that many fish like on that spot that morning. How it all happened, and the same deal bait being a brand new bait. Me and me being a new company to working with them for a year and being able to get a bait to showcase and help them and help me all at the same time. It just all came together at the perfect time. And so, you know, I'm definitely thankful. I just can't believe it. you believe it's been 10 years, you know, hey. 10 years. I was 40 years old. I've turned 50 just here recently. And, uh, and now I'm, uh, 50 and now that, I was 40 then same as you are now. So it's, uh, it's crazy. It's been that long. Yeah, I am. Uh, I am definitely getting older, and you don't look fifty though. I feel like I look like sixty when I look in the mirror. <laughs> <laughs> no <laughs> man, I, I feel like it. Miss Robin yeah. takes better care of you than my wife takes care of me. I think she just lets me go off the rails and be unhealthy. I think. I think. Miss Robin stays on you. <laughs> she, she definitely encourages me to do to do uh, to eat better, do good. I, I kind of quit. I kind of got off sugar. Um, <clears throat> almost not quite two years ago, about a year and a half ago, I still have some sugar that's in food and stuff like that, but I don't, I was addicted to sweet tea my whole life. And I mm -hmm. still, I still hate unsweet tea, but I'm drinking unsweet tea now, and you know, stevia and stuff like that. But I mean, it's still, I, I'm not eating desserts like I used to. And a lot of the stuff just trying to 
trying to stay healthy as possible because everything starts hurting a lot more. And I got two good boys that are uh, muscle heads that love working out. And I work out with them, worked out with Oakley last night after I got back from that expo and I'm still sore today. And Lakers a beast now and he's about 235 and Oakley's about 186.3. So they, they keep me uh, beat up and in shape as much as they can around the house. Listen, I saw Laker at, at Red Crest Friday, and and I always just – I seem to forget. I told you earlier today we talked on the phone, and I said I, I still see him as the little kid. You know, I was really young, I feel like, when I met you, but I always see Lakers just like – and Oakley both as like these little boys. And he walked uh, past me and walked – I'm like, he mm. is a large specimen. <laughs> man, he is. He's a big old boy. They're both, they're both big boys. But, man, after the last couple of years, he's worked out so much and eats like – 10 times a day, I think. And he, so he's just, he's big. And, uh, man, I, Robin, Robin's side has got, Robin's side of the family had some six, seven, six, nine cousins. So there's a lot of height in that side. And I had a little bit of height mixed in my dad's side too. So, uh, I just didn't get much of it. I'm barely 5'11 and they're all, uh, they always make fun of me. And I always say, man, what, what, you didn't have nothing to do with how tall you got. So why do you, why do you brag about it? You know, you just be thankful that you got tall. You know, you didn't do nothing to get it. You know, so why do you brag about it? <laughs> you just, you drew a good hand, young man. You drew a good hand, right? <laughs> you get right. Sometimes. Well, exactly dude, right. you know, we always think about the classic week. I feel like it, it, the hype that's always around it, it is an event that changes someone's life inevitably. And it has been for many, 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 many years. Really, I guess dating back to the first one, right? Just because all the pomp and circumstance around it, like it does change lives. But you've won very big events that have impacted your life at different times. I think back to the Wheeler FLW win, you were sleeping in Jerry Lawler's <laughs> floor. You guys didn't know yeah. if you, in the story you told, you've told it many times, but you told it on Boats and Pros especially, uh, shout out Jerry Lawler, our, our, our yeah. dear friend Jerry. But you were, you know, sleeping on on folks' couches. You and you and Robin yeah. traveling around the country trying to make it. You were buried in credit card debt, and then you win Wheeler. You win a hundred thousand yeah. FLW tour, but then you won the Bassmaster, the E fifty there. Uh, what a co- quarter of a million, right? When you won that one, that was at Dardanelle, like two thousand four, yeah. two thousand four. That was the first like real Bassmaster win, and. Um, and then I won. Then I won. I mean, you know, like I said, when I won the classic, I've never, you know, I've never won a lot of tournaments, unfortunately. But I've been real consistent. But I have won mm-hmm. some good events, and I won a, a 2013 Open, Northern Open. Then I won a the classic. Then I won a Northern 2015 Northern Open up at Syracuse, New York, at Oneida. So I've mm-hmm. I've had a few of those, you know, the Opens mixed in there with the FLW and and then that classic. So. Yeah, I've had out a few, but but I've made my living off of being consistent, you know, and not having a lot of bad tournaments. And I'd love to win more tournaments and um but it hadn't happened. But I still I still feel like I got a lot of time in me that we can still make something good happen, hopefully. Well well, no doubt about it, dude. But I but I, I guess what I mean by that is every time you've won, it's been kind of a life change, especially those those couple events were life changing. But when you won the classic in twenty fourteen, I feel like knowing you as long as I had you just saw this huge momentum shift, whether it was sponsors, like it was like a new Randy Howell. It was the same guy, but but man, you were shining like a diamond. I feel like I just got to witness that. And, and man, it just talk about that though, that experience, like once you win, is it like we feel like it is as fans that it does indeed change your life almost overnight? Yeah, it definitely did. You know, I it, what I feel like it did for me a whole lot was it gave me confidence that I struggled with, you know, most of my career. I've always been a, um, you know, a, a shifty kind of guy when it comes to confidence. You know, one, you know, one day you, you feel like you know what you're doing, feel like you meant to be out here. The next day you don't do good, and then you kind of you kind of get down. I, I I was like that a lot in my earlier years, you know, and still getting checks and fishing for checks, not really you know, winning tournaments as, as much as I wanted to win. But when I, so when I got to that classic, you know, and that was my 12th classic and I made, you know, made 12 of them prior to winning that one. And uh, so I really, really, I was, I was making a really good living before I won that classic, but I was about maxed out 
on anybody and anything that I could do without having a major title like the classic. So I was already getting working hard for a lot of good companies, getting paid, you know, about max of what I deserved probably at the time. But then when you get that title and get that classic title, then everything went to another level. And that's when, you know, you could just, I could really, you know, blow, blow the top off of kind of where I was the ceiling that I was kind of living under there for several years. So I, you know, I've had a great career with, sponsors and companies and a lot of people I work for now and work for for you know 20 plus years and and I'm proud of that but man that classic sure what broke broke the lid off and that kind of gave me the confidence the momentum and it gave me the you know the the really the the name across the country people that really follow sports so much that's the thing when it's just amazing all the opportunities and the invites I got to places and 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 everything everywhere you go you I was just what was so funny about it and what's so crazy about sports but it's like this with any sport uh i was the same guy three days before i won the classic and then three days after i won it i was that same person when i went everywhere but all of a sudden i was a special like a hero to, to so many people and like i was so much better than i was last week because i had three great days and i won the bass master classic but that's what sport is that's what sports does and that's what titles do and uh and it, and it just and it sets you up for the rest of your career and you know so i and i worked hard i capitalized on it i made you know as much money as i could from it everywhere i could and you know and still to this day you know everywhere you go 10 years later even at the red crest last week that's all everybody talks about uh in that show in birmingham i mean everybody that come up to me there's no telling how many there last weekend that were at the classic 10 years ago. And that reminded me, I mean, I was sitting right here in this arena when you won that classic and I watched it right there. I was standing on that bridge when you were catching those fish and, and I, you know, some people that from other States were like, I was sitting there watching it live and I was crying on the stuff. I was crying watching it on the computer. And, you know, and so it was just a great, you know, a miracle story that, that resonated with everybody. And, uh, and 10 years later, the story still lives on. And if it hadn't have been me that did it, I would still look at whoever, if that same story had evolved with somebody else, I would look at it and say, that was still the greatest story that ever happened in, in classic history. And, uh, I'm just thankful the Lord let it be me. <laughs> just that, that U-turn baby, that U-turn to go right yeah. there and then all of a sudden just start absolutely smashing it, it was such an incredible day and i love the fact that people could watch you standing on the causeway they were standing on the bridge people are hooping and hollering it, it was such a wild wild turn of events and yeah. then we talked about this on boats and pros and if y'all haven't seen that episode go watch that go find that on my youtube channel because it's really really it was a it was a special day with randy getting to do this interview and we actually went to the place this all went down it was it gives me chills right now just thinking yeah. about it but randy actually lives on gunnersville in that creek now that is the coolest thing to me <laughs> of all time yeah that is the coolest thing because that's another part of the story that just kind of happened because of of the classic you know i we me and robin lived in it we lived in springville for 13 years and trustful five years come from North Carolina originally, but our goal, we love Gunnersville and we wanted to come to Gunnersville and move. And I just decided I didn't want to live in Gunnersville until I could live on the water. I didn't just want to live in town and be close to the water. I wanted to live on the water one day. So our goal was to get here by the time we were probably in our fifties or so. That was kind of what we'd always talked about. And then winning the classic here just kind of accelerated that and got to know more people had opportunities, had a little bit of money. We're able to, buy a lot and get up here, you know, you know, 2015. So the year after we, 2000, yeah, 2015, 16, about a year, year and a half after I won, we moved up here. So it's a great, great town and just a great community. And man, it wouldn't have happened if I hadn't won that classic. And to think though, you have to drive over the bridge. I do. <laughs> uh, yeah. Y think, like in the comments, y'all need to understand. I don't know if you've ever been over there, but like, for all you low lifers, like this man has to drive over the causeway to go anywhere, to go to the grocery store, to leave yeah. town. He has to drive by the place where he won the Bassmaster Classic. Like that is, I never drive over it that I don't think about that, but that is too cool to me. And you have to think about it all the time. There's no way you don't. It's just a constant yeah. reminder. Yeah. When I, when I, I go across it, you know, the first few years we lived here, I thought it was always so funny and cool you know because it was such a 
nostalgia to for people that come here because this is a bucket list lake you know people from all over the country come fish this lake and it's packed with people yeah. every single day during the spring especially so that I've, I mean, multiple times though really the first few years I'd, I'd pull up to that i mean every time you went over that bridge there was a boat or two on on both sides of it every time day or night any day weekday weekend and a couple times I pulled over on the bridge, wasn't in my wrap truck, just in a car, you know, roll my window down. I'd holler out the window and I'd say, y'all doing any good? And the guys would be like, oh, no, we ain't catching nothing. I'm like, ain't that that, ain't that, that place that old boy caught one that Bass Master Classic yet? And they'd be like, yeah, he sure did, but we sure ain't catching nothing here. And I'm like, yeah, there ain't no fish here no more. You know, and I did that. I did that multiple times, and uh, and only just one or two times did people ever know it was me when I did it. They'd start, they'd figure it out. But I love doing that. It was funny for a while. But I, but I, I still, when I go over that bridge, I, I, I look out there some days, and I still say thank you, Lord, every time because that's where the miracle yeah. happens. There, you know, it really is. So it's cool to be living here in this same creek. It, you know, with Gunnersville, not to go too deep in the weeds, but it always amazes me to think about, or it's like a, a really overwhelming thought, I guess, to think about how many bass swim through those causeways <laughs> in a yeah. year. Like, if you could just see that. I mean, and I know with, with forward face and all that, obviously we get an idea of, of numbers of bass sometimes, but like the sheer number of fish that swim in and out of all those causeways in a year, is it's got to be? I mean, there's no telling. I mean, it's thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands. It's yeah. just crazy. And they continue to produce. I'm seeing that in the comments. People are like, "All oh, the bridges get fished like crazy." Yeah, and you'll still get your butt beat by people yeah. fishing local Somebody stuff. Fishing, really. <laughs> That's right. Because yeah. the first, the first person that gets to a good bridge uh, has to stay there almost all day. That's the problem with it. You can't. It's a not a good it's not a good tactic if you know other places to catch fish at. That's the problem because it's hard to sit there because you know they're biting everywhere else. But somebody's gonna sit yeah. there all day and get five to seven bites when they move through at the right time and they're gonna catch, you know, twenty five to thirty plus pounds. And that's what happens quite often in all these bridges. No, no doubt about it. All right, we got a Jamie Sizemore coming in. First Marshall experience was in two thousand seven with Randy. I'll never forget how great Randy and Robin treated me. Jamie Sizemore is a good, he's a, he's a fine fella up in Kentucky. I've got to know Jamie over the years and that yeah, doesn't surprise yeah. me. You're not going to, you won't see a lot of comments. People are like, well, I met Randy Howe and I wanted to fight him. You won't see very many of those. I don't think Randy's one of the good I ones. I heard this old, yeah. About all I've uh, ever done that is, is pass people maybe too close left or right on the water. You know, I might've sprayed somebody once in a while and I never meant to, you know, I, I will <laughs> say, I will say Randy Howe, the first Randy Howell uh, experience that I ever had, I was sitting at Decatur Boat Harbor waiting on, on, a, on a top 150 way in. I was there with my dad, and Jerry Lawler, and I was going to get to meet the Randy Howell that day. I'll never forget this moment. And, we're, and, and Jerry, who's a dear friend of Randy's that we mentioned a couple of times, but he's looking. He's like, man, he was supposed to be in at like 320. I don't know where he's at. And, and at the time, he had this gambler. OK, and all you could see was that flat top sticking out from behind that console. But he came in on truly in the air and like land all but landed like we're standing right there, right on the takeoff boat and made it with just like this much despair. And that's what I got to know about Randy was he liked to drive fast. There was only one speed and he was always no matter if he had. 47 pounds in the boat or none, he was going to show up right at the time to check in every single yeah. time. That's about right. That was the truth. You know, it used to be funny on the on the Bassmaster Elite days with me and Ike and Ellie were always when anytime we were uh, in the same flight, it would always be a race between me and him to get in last. You know, me and him would be the last two to get in. And Aaron Martins used to be like Aaron Martins would, would fish right there and wait to the last you know, a few seconds to get in, too. And we would always joke about it. But, I, you know, because I because I'll tell you, I won several tournaments in my career have come on that last five minutes yeah. last two minutes you know i mean so i mean it's a, so i never want to leave a minute on the table you know and uh so I, that's what I, I always believe that's a big deal well that was that the flw tour you won on wheeler you net the fish the camera boat had gone by the fish is flopping the boat big small mouth and you end up putting it in the live well literally at the takeoff right like yeah, before I'm, you check I'm, yeah, and I'm idling in, and the only guy that saw it happening was the check-in boat right there at the mouth of Ditto Land, and he was sitting there. He watched me swing that fish and get it in the boat, 
and they crank and I was like it the clock had already clocked click three o'clock and you get that full 59 seconds before it's 301 and you're late you know and I was already like three fifty three you know 15 seconds after three o'clock or whatever before it clicked and uh and I cut right in there and got in in time put the fish in it was number five and I beat Rick Clum by one ounce that day and it was my yeah. fifth fish had I not stopped you know and Rick Clum would have won that tournament had I not stopped and made that last his last two casts right there so and and the other that 2015 Northern Open at Lake Oneida Anthony Gagliardi was idling in and he had the tournament won and I stopped with a seagull dove down in front of me Catch, chasing bait and a small mouth busted and I stopped and stood up with my kill switch on grabbed my swim bait and threw it caught a three pound small mouth swung him in grabbed a little large mouth threw a pound and something went out my co-angler was sitting there and we cranked and made it in with 15 seconds to spare and I beat him by eight ounces so that's how I didn't me know that yeah that was a good one there and I was down just no tv stuff on those a whole lot you know but uh, yeah. that's why I'm always a big believer in the last minute. And I tell Laker all the time, and Laker still hasn't listened to me enough. You know, that open, he finished second in last week. He still came in almost 10 minutes early because he had 27 <laughs> pounds, you know. And I'm like, then he didn't win. I'm like, man, you left. You could have caught one more. You might have caught a seven-pounder right there. You had, like, eight minutes left. You could have cast 25, 30 more times at least. And uh, you never know what could happen. But if you don't give a minute, don't leave it on the table, you ain't never got any regrets. That's why I always say that. I so love, I love that. that. <laughs> well, speaking of Laker, Victor Nicholson coming in. He says, tell Randy, me and my bud have a guide trip with Laker in April on Gunnersville. Victor, I think you will enjoy that. That boy stays around them bass on Gunnersville all the time. He is a very good angler. Uh, Ryan Branch in the comments. I met Randy when I was 12 year old. Also, Luke, I got to fish with him in the Marks Outdoors tournament. So Ryan Branch has spent a day with you, and he was my fish yeah. fishing idol growing up from that day forward. Ryan Branch. That's no, a good Ryan. Name. Ryan's a good old boy. He can catch him yes, too. Ryan's a big, he's a big fish boy. <laughs> Not, yeah, he can He catch him. He'll catch him up. That is for sure. Uh, so there were a lot of comments when you first came on, and I and I love this. Uh, that said, oh, and look, it's Lakers' dad. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> because, no, you go, because you go through these, you go through these things in life, and like you're Randy Howe, the Bass Pro, the Bassmaster Classic champion, you know, people's fishing heroes, and now we got this situation where Laker. I mean, and I knew it; it was inevitable, right? Like the the young man's always had the bug; he's always loved it since he was really small and growing up on tour, and you guys. They, they traveled with you everywhere, so he's got to experience it. But, I, but before we get into kind of his recent success and what you think about that, what did you think when he said, okay, this is what I want to do? Did you did yeah. you think, as long because you and Robin have been at this for a very, very, very long time, right out of high school, you started this yeah. journey, right? Led us to, to so many years in the fishing world. But did you have any reservations like, well, man, because the industry is so crazy. I mean, it's not easy, right? It's not right. easy to make a living with a rod and reel. Did you have any reservations when he told you that's what he wanted to do? Yeah, yeah you know, a little bit early on, um, especially on Robin, because Robin is is a teacher and she's that was their teacher. She's a big education, you know, girl. And, and she, you know, she really wanted to, you know, make sure they explored every other way you know, <clears throat> their own passion, whatever their own passion is, you know, they, that was the whole thing. We didn't, we never wanted Laker or Oakley to, to try to do something just because I did it or just because they think I thought they should do it. Uh, because everywhere you went as a kid growing up, that's everybody would always say, are you going to be a fisherman like your dad one day, you know, and you don't want to be that that dad that pushes it on them. So we never pushed it on them and, you know, but we watched it evolve with Laker through high school fishing and I knew it was his passion, you know, and we, we gave him plenty of opportunities to try to do other things. And, um, he got a two year business marketing degree at Snead community college here and didn't, didn't go to fishing the college route with the, the big fishing college fishing route. He started to, and then just didn't knew it wasn't, wasn't for him at the time. So he had a good focus all his life. He's wanting to know what he wanted to do. And he had the right personality for it and the right look for it and uh and the knowledge and then when the electronics game come along like it has and he's been able to be on the forefront of that as a young angler too 
that I think that's really going to help him a lot too. So uh, I, I, after probably that first year he started out doing it, uh, I probably I got better with it pretty quick. <clears throat> Robin was still a little bit more reserved than I was, making sure because she knows because she's she she struggled and grinded it out with me early on, and you know, and it took us four or five years to really ever get over the hump to really ever make a living. And uh, so we didn't want them to ever struggle like that. But so he's in it. But Oakley, you know, Oakley at the same time now, Oakley, we put him in high school here in Gunnersville just so he could play basketball. And then as he got away from fishing and got with everybody else doing other things, he got different influences and and he wants to be able to make money um, easier, I guess, or better or different or more traditional ways. And so he doesn't have the same uh, passion for fishing that Laker does, and that's fine. I want it, but but I would, the main thing you just want everybody, your kids, just like my kids, you want them to do something they love every day. They don't get up and go to work and dread it every day. They want they do something they love, and uh, so that that's the main thing we we want them to do, and that's that, then you're then you're happy for them. Well, no, no doubt, man. And I, I, it's, it's like, I think about Laker, I think about, I see what Alton Jones Jr. is doing. You know, he grew up like that homeschooled on the tour. He's always right by his dad's side. Your boys were the same way. So it's no shocker to see Laker doing well. I just can't brag on him enough for the way he carries himself, even from a very young age, but he is, he, when he gets his footing under him and he obviously is more and more and more all the time on the water in these tournaments, He's going to be a problem. <laughs> what I mean in a good way, he's going to be a problem because he's got, like you said, he is the total package. I see his social media stuff, man. He's out there working so hard. I see him at the shows. He's he's already got it dialed, man. <laughs> working for those sponsors, doing what he needs to do. And I would say any any young angler out there that that wants a another young angler to look up to, that Laker is one of those because he's had a great teacher in his mom and his dad in, in what to be and what not to be, but he's doing things the right way. And listen, I, I love Kyle Austin. Kyle's a friend of mine. I'm, I'm proud for Kyle, but I, yeah. I was sitting at the MPFL desk on live refreshing bass track. We're literally commentating Amistad and I'm sitting there just refresh, refresh, refresh. I was like, I was pulling for old Laker. I'm like, come on, dude, which I said, <laughs> on this show, he made me feel really old by, uh, you know, by doing very yeah, good, I'm just like, goodness gracious. I appreciate, I appreciate all that, man, and I know he appreciates yeah. it too. Yeah, he appreciates it too. You're cutting out a little bit, so if I'm talking on top of y'all, yeah, I don't mean no, to be. Good. But, uh, um, he, he, but yeah, that's what I think. He, you know, I wanted him to be <clears throat> coming into this to not be my son all the time, as far as everybody saying, oh, he's. You know, he's Randy Howell's boy or or he's got everything given to him or, you know, blah, blah, blah and all that. So we, you know, he has had a, you know, an easier road, quicker road than a lot of people. He would and he's not one that would say, I know I haven't. He knows he has, too. He's had opportunities. But at the same time, he's he's done the right things with those opportunities. <clears throat> and, and he's a humble, uh, humble good-hearted kid that loves people and he, he's genuine you know he's honest and he he wants to help people he loves to see other people do good he don't have a a, a bitter jealous uh envious bone in his body you know he's got he'll do anything give you the shirt off his back and that's the biggest thing that i'm proud of more than uh than him being just a good fisherman it's just that he's a good person he's a good he loves the lord again he got married back in august him and maddie and she's a sweet girl and they you know, he's got, he's doing everything right and he's working hard. <clears throat> he's guiding, <clears throat> excuse me, he's guiding a lot, trying to make money in between times and he's built his own way and he's got his own sponsors with local people and guide clients and different people. He's raised money through other places other than just regular, you know, really the only sponsors I've helped him get uh, are Triton because it's a family, that was a family boat for me. I kind of wanted him to be in Triton just because of the legacy of that. And then uh, Daiwa, you know, and Livingston and everybody else that he's kind of done on his own. And uh, so I'm I'm proud of him and I want to see him win. And I want to say I want to see him do so win that tournament so bad. We drove so fast to get to Santee to watch him because I could because I didn't have another tournament somewhere else. And I was able to go and be there. And uh, it was so great. But just seeing him come in second, but how he handled it, he, you know, he wasn't heartbroken, you know, or anything. He was, you know, he was happy for Kyle and. He hugged him on stage and he just, you know, you can just tell he 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 loved being there and he didn't he probably loved finishing second more than anybody has ever loved finishing second, is what I feel like. 
<laughs> well, it's, but listen, to be that age and in those opens, that is it's cutthroat as it gets. There, there's over 200 amazing anglers in every single one of those. It's not easy to win one. It's not easy to make the final day cut, but to finish second. And, and you said this to me at Red, Red Crest. I was like, man, I was pulling for, pulling for him. And you said, yeah, you catch 80 pounds in three days. You're supposed to win. Gosh, I know. That's what I said. Three best days of his life and he didn't win. You know, that's a shame. <laughs> incredible man we we said the same thing at santee mm -hmm. last year todd goad finished second uh to patrick walters there in our mpfl and i forget what the the total weight was but todd had three of the greatest fishing days of his life and still came up short like those lakes with really big ones in it will do that though they will definitely yeah. do that you can get your heart broke uh, a little bit exactly right and that, that was uh but it, I, i've seen already just a change in his confidence and just his belief. You know, he believes and knows that he can do it, I think, now. And I really feel like that this is going to be the turning point to kind of get him on a good momentum stride. And that's what it's all about in fishing. It's confidence and momentum. And confidence is the biggest, biggest key to success in any sport, but in fishing, I think, more than any other sport. Yeah, it is. It's all decisions too, right? I mean, it's all between the ears. If you get spun and – and, and that confidence gets knocked back, you could make the wrong decision that could cost you for the entire week. And, you know, fishing somewhere the wrong for an hour in a Bassmaster Open can can throw your entire season off potentially, right? Like every yeah. every fish doesn't matter. Yeah, that's right. And that, that, week, that week prior to that, he fished uh, – he's fishing all six MLF invitationals, right. Tiger Warehouse invitationals. He's fishing – nine opens and four toyotas so he's fishing 19 tournaments and the week before Jeez. that he, he he missed the cut at uh like uh, west point lake by one ounce he was 31st the top 30 mate cut so he still got an eight thousand dollar check and he was happy but he was one ounce from being able to fish the final day and win ten thousand dollars he was so bummed out and uh, i said well hey that's all right you just go right on to that opening you know you you know keep that momentum going you did good he finally caught a five pounder that last day and had a finally got a good bite and uh and then stuff started rolling and he didn't even get as much practice he really didn't get to practice much at all because of that other tournament and i think that helped him and uh so now he drove all night long after that show saturday night drove all the way and got to harris chain at five o'clock yesterday morning and practiced yesterday and it's practicing today and that Toyota starts tomorrow at Harris chain. And so he's, he's doing the stuff and he's got the momentum. I, I can't do that. I know I couldn't do that when I was 22, I couldn't even drive all night and then go fishing the next day, but he's doing it. So uh, he's going to get a break soon. You'll see him win something soon. I believe. There ain't, no, there ain't no doubt, man. You, you, you get that many swings at the bat and you fish as, as, as you know, much as he does, you, you are that talent of a, of a young angler as he is. Cause he can do it all. He can he can catch them from this deep to out using forward facing. I mean, there's there's no doubt about it. He's great at, at a lot of it. Uh, I did I did think it was funny, and I wanted to know. And then I, I saw a couple clips of him. Yeah. But at Santee, I saw him putting up weights, and all I think about is Randy Howe being one of the greatest sight fishermen that I've ever known in my life. And I thought that boy's got to be catching them on the bed over there. Ain't no way he's catching them any <laughs> other way. He's looking at him like his daddy, and he wasn't. I don't think right. I don't think he was catching them all looking at all. No. He was all chat, all chatterbait pretty much. He caught them all on chatterbait with a Zayco trailer, uh, open water and grass. And he even, and you know, like I say, he did his own thing. I had just been there for Bass Pro Tour, and I finished twelfth on my out of my group, and didn't and barely missed that cut. And um, and I couldn't tell him nothing because it was already off limits. And uh, so he was doing his own research and watching his own live on our tour and all that. And when he told me. I'm going to the lower lake. I'm like, golly, man. I said, man, I mean, you saw him live, man. Not many people did any good in the lower lake. I said, that's a rough ride. I was telling everything I could think of to, to probably discourage him from wanting to go on a long, rough ride because that lake is so dangerous. That's all I'm thinking. I'm his dad, and I know how oh, crazy man. he likes to drive fast like me, and I didn't want him to have to run that far. And then he goes and finds him on the lower lake on his own and does good. So now I'm like, you give me them waypoints in case I go back, boy. <laughs> yeah, be sure to save those on a card, young man. Yeah, for that's that. right. It'll help me one day now. Get some of that, some of that payback. 
it's so it's so funny though that I, I immediately that is where my mind went because I'm like, yeah, it's Randy's boy. I bet he's over there looking at him. There's no way he's not. I know because because yeah. I know you guys have fished over there a good bit over the years, um, and and I'm sure he's been there plenty of times. But speaking of that, like fishing styles, we talked a little bit about this today, and I like to get, mm-hmm. get you to touch on this for folks because it is it is a huge discussion, obviously. But you've got uh, a lot of youth. And, and Lakers, one of them that I would consider they're coming in, they're working hard. Like you just said, they're, they're absolutely addicted with it. They're, they're addicted to it. They're obsessed with it. They will outwork you. They are better at electronics than a lot of veteran guys. And I think you would agree with that, but they have put their time in and they grew up, they, they kind of collided with it, right? Like when they got into the sport was when all that started blowing up. That being said, you are, when I first met you, you were Mr. Floating Wire, man. You were well, on a diet, son. Like I was, I was going to throw me a float more because of Randy. Hell, that was my, I had a trading <laughs> card when I was about 19, uh, made when I thought I was a big time professional fisherman in the making. And it's a favorite bait floating worm. And it was only because of Randy Hell. period in the uh, story. But, but you, you've been a, a grinder. Ooh. You've said that earlier. Consistency has been your career, but with this <clears> new tech, how much time are you spending trying to get better with it? Man, I tell you, it is, it is the, the hot topic and it's a big deal because it's totally the great equalizer, you know, and if that, if I might have heard somebody say that or I might have made that up. I don't know, but it's the great equalizer, just like in the Red Crest the other day, Dalton Head, the real good fishing, you know, kid from over there in Montevallo and uh, he's out there competing with with the best of them, running around catching them on on uh, active target, you know. And he and he could have you know, had he just made a, another decision right or two that day. The pressure probably got hard on him, and he didn't make that final day. But he could have potentially, you know, gave Dustin a run for the money the last day. And he's 19 years old, and that could never have happened back before technology because knowledge and experience and time on the water, all that stuff that we grew up knowing that was all that mattered. You know, that's what made you good. And the older you got, the better you should get. And now it's totally the great equalizer is the electronics. And I've, and I've watched Laker come up and learn it all. And I've learned a lot of it from him. And Drew Gill is another one of the greatest ones out there. And Drew, uh, mm. we've known Drew since he was uh, first year in college. He stayed at my house for a college tournament. And I've tried to, you know, the good thing having a connection with all my when my boys are young, I, you know, I've been able to connect with a lot of other young high school and college age kids that love fishing. And, you know, a lot of them have stayed at our house for tournaments and, and, and just well, I love to help people because I, I know their passion like I was. I wish somebody could have helped me more when I was their age. So I try to help as many of those as I can. But now it's getting to the point of seeing how good they're doing that now I'm kind of going back to them kids and I'm like, hey, y'all try help me a little bit now. I need a little help. Let me get in the boat. Show me, show me how you do this better than I do and why you're so efficient with this. You know, and uh, and Lakers got my stuff dialed in right. And this year on my Triton, I put a HDS 16 Pro up, up front that I run my Active Target 2 on. And so I can see it even better and clearer and got see clear power harness. So it's all clear and crisp. And I got everything you need. You know, I don't have multiple unit. I mean, multiple deucers, but you don't really need that because some of the best guys out there only have one. I mean, you talked about. And uh, so you know, man, I, I want to learn it. And my goal, I've, like I joke about, is to be the best over 50 scoper or active target guy on tour. And that's my goal. And I'm going to do it, I'm telling you, because I'm not going down in flames griping and complaining that, that you know, yes, I, you know I'm not going to do it. I'm, if it's it's going to be my fault if I don't make it because uh, it's on me. And I'm going and I'm putting the time and I've practiced more, I've fished more, and I, I, I've done more in this off season, really two off seasons now than I've ever fished and done before. And that's the hard thing when you get to be this age with boys in high school and basketball and all the sports like you do with yours. If you're going to be a good dad and spend time with them, you've got someplace you're going to suffer somewhere. So you can't be gone all the time and sac- and lose all your family time. So I've chosen to do the, the stuff with my family more. And I haven't fished a lot the last two or three years, four years and, you know, and there's times that I've not been consistent like I should have. And it's a lot of times it's because I haven't put the time in that a lot of them are putting in. So that's my fault. 
but I'm going to start. I'm already doing it more now. And when Oakley gets out of high school this year, goes to college, Alabama, me and Robin are going to be on the road again, and I'm going to be fishing a lot more. And I'm telling you, I'm going to have a, I'm going to have, I'm going to have a resurgence in my fifties, and I'm going to, I'm going to really, I feel like I'm going to do good because I'm going to learn the stuff that I'm learning. I'm already learned it. I'm going to keep getting better with it. I just got to now erase a lot of them memories of all that pretty stuff on the bank and all those million waypoints I've got from every lake around the country, connect the dots on my Lowrance everywhere I go. And I go run all these places and look at stuff and none of it's really any good anymore. I just need to put a trolling motor down and get out there and start zigzagging back and forth and, and find me some fish and throw out there and catch them like a lot of them are doing. And I know how to do it and I'm going to get better at it. I promise you that. Well, <clears throat> do you think those fish, because there's a lot more pressure now than ever before. I've said on this show, I feel like the, the main reason people are upset is because we are finding out we are wrong. And that we have been wrong, I guess I mean by that. That all the magazine articles, that what we thought bass did, they never mm -hmm. did. You and I talked about this a little bit at Redcrest. Do you think, that, is that the case? Or have the fish changed because of fishing pressure? And now with this technology, we can kind of intercept them out there? Or did, did they always just do this, Randy Howe? Were they just, when you went down a stretch of bank and you didn't get bit? Mm -hmm. Well, they're just not biting. Or were they always over your shoulder? And we just didn't know it that's what that's what bugs the heck out of me is 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 probably that they were out there all the time swimming around and we didn't know it you know and i i feel like it could be some of what you said too it could be that just so much pressure and people fishing the banks could have pushed fish out there more could have pushed bait fish out but we're learning more and more that the fish follow bait fish more than we yes. ever realized you know we thought we always knew stripers did and when like in smith lake and lakes that where they spotted bass we knew they did but we never realized a large mouth would swim around in the middle of the great big wide open lake just following bait fish around under five or six foot deep under the surface you know in a hundred foot of water you know we didn't know that and we would have never known that had it not been for electronics and that's why all the years of our co-angler days back in the old bass master days when you had the co-angler and they throw a rattle trap out and catch a five pounder out in the middle. And I'm like, how in the world that guy get that lucky catch a five pounder. And I tell that story and I've had to have so many times. And there was probably a freaking hundred of them out there. If I could have just <laughs> had enough sense to turn around and start fishing out there. <laughs> uh, I know so many times you just wish you could have been on, the, you could have known something a little bit before everybody else did, you know, because that would have made a difference. But what, that's, what's so cool about it. You know, we didn't know, we don't know nearly what we thought we knew about them, but that's what's so that's what I love about it and what is so exciting to me because I've done this my whole life and it and it, and it was a point there just you know ten years ago that it was monotonous to me a lot of times you know I you know you kind of get burnt out sometimes when you do it for a long time and you get in a grind and you know nothing changes and it's the same old thing all the time that's the way it was for a long time and I didn't enjoy it for several periods of my career it just kind of got to be monotonous and now it's like a brand new world you know has opened up to me personally because i'm i'm learning so much more than i ever learned before every time i go out and play with that active target on and see those fish swimming and i throw bait and i watch the bait and i see a fish and i realize it's a bass and they come by it and then i'm like hook up i'm like god i can't then you see how big it is and it's like oh my yeah i love that it's really fun and, and no matter what people say and how bored it might be to watch it's boring to watch golf to me but people still love to play it and people still watch people play it because they get better by watching them so no matter how bad people say they don't like to watch people looking down at their screen if they learn what those people are doing and how to catch more fish because of it. That's all we ever want to do is learn how to beat the bass. The bass have beat us way more than we've ever beat them. You know, this is the losingest sport that you could ever play in and make a living is to lose as much as I've lost in my life. And I've still made a good living doing it. So the more I can get good at it, the more I'm one up and on them bass over these years, that's all I want to do. So it fires me up to have that opportunity. <laughs> no doubt. And I, I love yeah. what you said about how excited you get with the forward mm -hmm. facing because you are a sight fisherman. Uh, and again, yeah. you're, you're one of those guys that, that influenced me. That's my favorite way to bass fish. And you know that about me. I love to sight fish, mm -hmm. man. That's my, and I love whether it's redfish, bass, whatever. Like I love to see fish, 
but that's what forward facing has done. Like I get so jacked up when I see one and you see them coming. I'm like, it's the same as looking over there by a stump, seeing them on the bed. I'm like, yeah. Oh, 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 I love that moment. And doing live coverage like I do, I can tell you, if you're going to be, if you're honest with yourself as a fan of the sport and I look, not every tournament is top water blow ups on a frog or cool swim jig bites or flipping bites. I watch a lot of bass fishing. I, I, I'm fortunate that that's part yeah. of my, how, how I pay my light bill. Watching fishing for five straight hours, like I get to do with MPFL Alabama Bass Trail, it's really boring. Watching it somebody is. fish is boring. I don't care if they're, what they're doing. For that's the right. most part, fishing is, most of the time, it's a lot like hunting in that it's a lot of boring with like 30 second windows of excitement, right? So right. I think those criticisms, I understand it, but I think it's not changed a lot in that. I, except on the live coverage, I feel like people are catching a lot more big ones than ever before. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly right. And that's the thing. We, you know, it's it's boring to watch other people. It's, it's just a sport. Sometimes it's not exciting. Sometimes always to watch other people do it anyway. You know, when you, yeah, it's right. fun to go do it yourself. But in, like I, as I mentioned, I say golf again, you know. People that love to play golf, it's probably be fun to play golf, but it ain't as much fun to watch golf. And fishing is the same way sometimes to me too. But now when you see Jacob Wheeler and Dustin Connell and Drew Gill and Dakota Ebear, Michael Neal, and what the list goes on of all the great ones, and Drew and Trey, Trey McKinney over there on Bassmaster now, and you see them, when they make a cast, they are throwing at a bass almost every time they make a cast. And now – I, I, you know, I throw 2,000 casts a day all my life and wear my arms and shoulders and elbows and I have all both my elbows done twice. And I mean, I've got all this done because I've cast my life away and now you don't have to do that anymore. And, 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 and that's what's so exciting about it. I, your, your efficiency is so much better. And I heard Drew Gill on, um, uh, on Bass Talk Live, I think on, um, uh, uh pan rack show um he drew gill did a really good interview on there i heard and he said you know the days of uh well that's just fishing those days are kind of going away like we always say well that's just fishing and i still say it you know that's you know it ain't no real reason i didn't catch them well, that's just fishing and now those guys with electronics are taking that out of the game because now you can find them and bite biting somewhere every day if you do the right thing and you get your odds and your numbers or your averages up and you throw it enough bass every day that you're going to get enough of them to bite so that's why it excites me and that's why i want to keep getting better at it and i want to be i want to be in them top tens with nine of them boys that are under 25 years old and maybe 50 years old and may beat them you know yes. that's what i'm that's what i want to do you know that's that's what's exciting about it and uh and you can't do that in any other sport you know lebron's lebron's son's playing basketball now but he don't he don't go home and tell his dad nothing about how to be better at playing basketball but my son is 22 and he can tell me how to be better and he can be legit and i can be better and that's that's the only sport in the world like that that's awesome, man. And, and to go back to your point, Drew Gill, real quick, I had him on. We did a live, the last LBO actually live I did. I had Drew, and I just had to stop even trying to talk because he is yeah. so intelligent. He is. He is, I, I just sounded like – I always sound like a dummy, but I really did talking to him because that kid, he doesn't need to be bass fishing, though, Randy. He needs yeah. to be curious cancer he needs to be all the, like <laughs> coming up with world, ideas for world peace like he needs to be president i know, like, I know. We need, man yeah. out of bass I'm proud of him i'm glad that's what he likes let's go do something bigger than bass vision his dad his dad is the same way because his dad's a college professor and okay. i know his dad pretty well and his dad's super smart and his mom's super smart and they're i mean i've heard all the stories about his whole family from his dad and they're super high IQ people, not people that normally sign up for bass tournaments. And uh, but he, but he, he but he, uh, he is so good. But he's humble and he's got a sweet spirit about. I didn't know you did a show with him. I'm stay so busy. I yeah. didn't go back and watch that because yeah. I love it to hear. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, he's just. A, he, awesome. I, could sit, 
I could listen to him for hours. Like, and and listen, it's I've never met him in person until this past Friday, and he went all the way out of his way. I had my back to kind of the aisle, and I somebody walked up behind me, grabbed me by the arm, turned around, Drew. He goes, "Hey man, I just want to come over and and speak and say thank you again for having me on the show." He's such a such a nice young man. Got his head yeah. on the right way. And, uh, but yeah. I was, I, I actually, I'll, I'll tell this on myself. I knew nothing about him. I had not, I don't listen to all the other fishing podcasts just because I try to stay in my own lane and, and uh, yeah. I'll listen to Pank a little bit, yeah. but Matt and I talk a lot about who we're having on different things. And, uh, I had not, I'd seen clips of Drew talking on social media a little bit on some shows, but nothing else. And I told my wife, I'm like, she's like, who you got tonight? I'm like, ah, oh, Drew Gill. And yeah, I, I don't know. I think it'll just it'll be an okay show. I don't I don't know. I, I don't know that much about it, man. <laughs> I'm five minutes in and I'm like a little kid. Like, wow. tell me more, Mr. Wow. Gill. Like it, it was incredible. I, I know I actually listened to that other one. I was dri driving driving back from Toledo Bend. I listened to the Drew show twice. The same the same thing. I went back and listened to it again. And that's how eager I am to learn and want to get better that's at it. Cool. And that's the that's the cool thing about Drew is he he is humble and he's gracious and he won't and he don't mind sharing and telling people and uh and a lot of guys don't like that about him a lot of guys he's busting he's blowing the he's blowing the cover on a lot of guys because a lot of guys have been doing what he's doing and have been real good at it and they've been tight-lipped i mean i'm telling you michael neal dakota ebear wheeler best he can connell best he can a lot of them guys they've been doing this for three four years now and dominating and playing the old shucks game oh well, i don't know yeah i just you know and whatever but, but but drew is telling everything that he does and he's and that's what they've been doing and that's a lot of them don't like that but but people better listen up when somebody like that starts talking because he's got it figured out and you can learn it uh when you when somebody tells you how to do it like that no doubt listen when he started speaking you can tell immediately like, okay this is not junk he's telling you straight yeah. up Trying That's to throw right. you for a loop, like fisherman can. It, it's amazing, uh, dude. Before I before I get you out of here, I appreciate your time, big time. Ten year anniversary of Randy House Classic win to have him is an is an honor. Mark Shannon, this comment not worth thirty to fifty thousand dollars to catch a bass. I might pay that for a boat, but that's because it's a necessity. So let me ask you this, because I because it, it is a for a lot of people the the, the price the the mm. entry level for all the the barrier to entry could say is a lot for a lot of people man myself included I, I understand that if you did not fish professionally because fishing's all about what you make it i say that all the time if you did not fish yeah. professionally would you still be as consumed with getting better at it or would randy howe just go throw a cinco and and a wacky worm around and a you know and a howler and just fish like you like to fish you know that's a that's a good question i really never thought about that you know because we do do it for a living and, and all that but you know if you when you put it in that perspective i probably i probably i probably would still keep it simple you know and i would just get back out i'd keep you know doing the same things because you can still catch plenty of fish doing that you just can't be as competitive as you used to be because of it but you can still have plenty of fun catching fish and now like we joke about it all the time there's still a lot more fish on the bank getting left alone now because people are fishing out in the middle of the lake so right. much so there's still a lot of fish there and in a five fish limit format on the Bassmaster side i still feel like you can be competitive in that format you know we're fishing old school ways the ways we've always fished and you're seeing guys still doing that but in the bass pro tour no limit format it's got to the point now you can't be competitive without doing that but as a simple fun fishing guy you know if i just fished on the weekends or fish with my boys or whatever taking it easy i'd probably keep it simple and and do a lot of the simple fishing too you know amen and i and look i say that if you want to if you just fish on the weekends whether it's tournaments or not and you want to put fifty thousand dollars worth of electronics on your boat and that helps you get through your life. You got your nine to five and you get to fish on the weekends mm -hmm. and that's how you enjoy it. Hey, if you're happy, I'm happy. If you're a guy that wants to just throw a buzz bait 12 months out of the year and that's the only rod you got, you got a Randy Howe signature dive rod and you throw a buzz bait on it on braid all the time. Cool. Fishing yeah. is beautiful because that's what makes if If you like to just crappie fish, you know, whatever, like mm -hmm. last, last week, 
on Wilson Lake on the, on the Tennessee River, where you know I, I love more than anywhere. Uh, mm-hmm. I was down there. I, I went to crappie fish. My wife wanted to go out. We went out with crappie fish for a little bit. I caught me caught me a few crappie. I caught me a big old bass on a crappie jig, one over five pound big to me on like four pound line. I'm like, dang, that's cool. Mm-hmm. A live goat. Well, then some fish started schooling, and it was a mix of largemouth and hybrids. And buddy, I sat there and put it on them hybrids for about an hour. Mm-hmm. I'll die. I would catch one bass for every 10 of those jokers I caught. I'm not bashful. Yeah. I like no, pulling back. I like to catch yeah. fishing. I don't know. I just want to feel That's something right. pull and line them in, you know, like me and Jerry Lawler were joking the other day at Wheeler, but catching drum and over and over. And Jerry said, I ought to start a drum guide <laughs> service. You know, these drum are more fun to catch than a bass and that you catch they them so me. easily. And like nobody and people just call them a trash fish because they are. But if you just want to go catch fish, you can go drum fishing. You can have a ball on Lake Wheeler and even on Lake Gunnersville, even the Tennessee River. Yeah, uh, I'll make a post with Jerry Lawler's number. Any of y'all want to go on a drum trip? We'll get you hooked up with Jerry. <laughs> yeah, what a tell him to watch this show. Hey, but hey, we get back to the money, the money aspect of it. Honestly, if you think about it, guys that are saying you know, 30 to $50,000, you know, if you really think about it, you know, no, you know, not, not joking, but seriously, you don't, you don't, you can spend $3,000 on a HDS live unit, pro unit, whatever, and a active target, you know, and, and put them on your boat for 4,000 to $4,500 all in on your trolling motor. And you don't even need none of the other stuff. That is all you need if you to do for Ford Fade and Sonar and learn that. Cause you got, and if you fish one lake all the time, you don't really need it. You don't even need to use the mapping on your unit. You just use that one unit. And I know boys up here at Gunnersville that's got, you know, 1982 Hydrosport, you know, with this boat, motor, trailer, everything's worth about 1500 and they got $4,000 worth of electronics on it. And they catch them just as good or better than I can. And, uh, it's like, Seeing the boys in the hood with the old Caprice Classic, you know, thousand dollar car, and they got four thousand dollar wheels and three thousand dollar stereo in that thing, you know. But. That's right. <laughs> I see it all the time, all the time on Tennessee River, man. I see you, you don't have to have a brand new boat every year, but you can fix it up like a brand new one. You know, there, yeah. there's plenty of ways to do that, and the and the, you know, like you said, you only need one screen. I, I tell you right now, my Express this year. I've got, I do have a, tw- I have an HDS 12 at the console that I bought. And I always feel like I have to say that because everybody thinks everything's yeah. free in the world. <laughs> uh, I have gotten free units in the past, but not from Lawrence. And so I bought an HDS 12 for my console. And up front, I have a Garmin 12 for live scope. And then I have a nine inch Lawrence just for mapping. That's all I have. I don't have anything else because that's mm-hmm. what I, if I'm going to get off the bank. I'm not going to look at anything else. I'm only going to look at that and look at mapping. That's all I got yeah. this year. I, I really, I don't want to say I dumbed it down, but I used to have like two 12s and all. I'm like, no, I want one screen for live, one for mapping, and that's what I got. Yeah, and I, I've just got two up front of mine. I went with a 16 this time because I can, and I want to see, yeah. and see yeah. the stuff clearer, a bigger screen, and it's like a movie on that bigger screen, and some guys are using even bigger ones, but that 16 is perfect for me. My boat logic mount has it stacked up pretty high where I can see it well. I got a 12 under it, and that 12 I can I just use mostly to see the map and the contours on my C map Lorantz and you know, and that's about it. And I really feel like that's all you really got to have. You know, I think a lot of them have three units, and they might use a 360 um, on a di- on a hummingbird or something mixed in with it. But I think you can get by with one if you don't want to have the money to spend on two. And but if you're gonna have uh, the money as you want, two is really I feel like all you really need. Well, with the, the way those mounts are too, uh, the transducer mounts. I mean, for like Lawrence has got the scout yeah. mode. Garmin has the perspective. The the mount I got, Trent Palmer at Sonar Pros hooked me up, and I got a mount that I can just reach down there and turn the thing, and I can go perspective or regular live scope on the same mount. Like I, I mean, and I see why people rig up the two. So you're, you know, because it does stink taking two seconds to turn it. I guess, but like for me, it's it's simple, stupid. I've got one, one unit, one transducer. Uh, Mark McQua coming in, the one and only, the legend in the comments hey randy visited with laker this morning so dang proud of him uh there's a lot tournament of that right there that's the man that is tournament director extraordinaire mr mike mcquaw we always appreciate him he he's a low lifer yeah, man he, he pops in the comments a lot yeah. he's a he's a highbrow low lifer he's, he's a low lifer he's, in high sneaking in there. 
He's sneaking in there listening in, and he? yeah, that's good. I appreciate uh, Mark Marsha. Great man, he's a great tournament director. I've always loved him. He treats people the same no matter who you are. If you fish one tournament or a thousand tournaments on the Toyota series and everywhere else, and it means a lot to hear good good things. That's what's so cool about hearing people everywhere you go. You know, make good comments about your son, and you know, it makes you proud. And that's the main thing. Just hearing, I don't care if people say, "Man, that boy's the best fisherman I ever heard seen." That means nothing to me. But when they say he's a good kid, or he's good, you know, nice and humble, and he's you know genuine and he cares about him or whatever, that's the kind of person. That's the kind of stuff you like to hear as a parent, you know. And I'm thankful. Yeah. I'm proud of that. No doubt about it. You should be proud, and you should be proud of the career you've put together. Yeah. And you still got a long way to go in this deal. You're going to be the best. Y'all heard it right here, you low yeah. lifer. He That's is right. going to be the best over 50 scoper on the on the trails. Here he comes, Randy mm -hmm. Howe. Buddy, I, I really appreciate you doing this, man. It was a lot of fun. It means a lot to me uh, to, to get to do this. Who would have ever thought many, many moons ago that I would be doing this? And that, uh, <laughs> I mean, I knew you would still be a pro, but I didn't know what in the world I'd be doing. I'm just glad I'm not like in prison or something. <laughs> I am too. I'm glad you're. I'm glad you're doing good, and you're you're still fishing and watching fishing, and you love. Oh. You're a fan. Of, you're a fan of the sport, just like I am, and I love. It's awesome no that there's so many ways you can make a living in the sport, and you got your niche, and that's what it's all about. And uh, I mean, and it's cool to see what you're doing over there with MPFL, and those guys are doing great. And it's good to see, you know, another good trail paying good money and having live coverage where guys can have more more guys can have an opportunity to try to make money fishing and following chasing their passion and that's that's what it's all about you know no doubt no doubt man i appreciate that buddy and i uh, always appreciate you tell miss robin i said hello and uh i'll see you in tulsa i'm sure roaming around <laughs> Yeah, I'll be flying in there Wednesday, and I'll be at the Daiwa booth. Hey, see this shirt I got on? Hey, Daiwa's giving these free shirts away. So that, that, if you, it's a $60 Sims shirt. You buy a tattoo of real, you can get a free shirt. That promotion's going on right now every, at all the dealers. But if you come to the Classic next week and buy a tattoo of real there in the booth, you can get a free $60 shirt. So that's what I got. I got mine yesterday uh, down there at, at Red Crest. I didn't buy a real, I'll be honest with you. I didn't have to buy the real. But I, but I got, I got the rep. I got the dial rep. Just go ahead and give me the shirt because I wanted the shirt really bad. So, uh, y'all need to get you one. And I'm like, I'm gonna be at all the booths at the classic. I'm more out from doing it at Red Crest, but the classic's gonna be even bigger. A lot more booths, lots of people, and lots of. I'm gonna be all over the place. So if y'all come out and see us out there, man, it's gonna be an exciting. I'm looking forward to seeing Grand Lake because I almost won the classic on Grand Lake, the one that Edwin won. Um, and that classic, and then all the ones since then. But this is going to be the first time the classic's gone back there, same time of the year, but mm -hmm. with the electronics game in full force now. So it's going to be cool to see if old school and new school are going to collide, if there's going to be a mixture like Jason Christie, Jason Christie and the big one ounce Colorado spinnerbait, if that's going to keep playing, or, or if they're going to, or, or Trey McKinney ain't in this one, but some of the other young guys that that are scoping really, really good. If they're going to get out there and figure out how to catch bass on Grand Lake that other people haven't figured out how to catch. So I'm excited to watch that next week myself. That's going to be a lot of fun. Give me your, give me your pick to win the classic off the top of your head before I let you yeah. go. I tell you, I, I, I feel like I really got a feeling that Jason Christie will, will win because he's a, he's a hardcore fierce competitor. He's already won classic. Now he's got that monkey off his back. And I feel like he was so close to winning there a time or two in the past that, uh, and he knows how to win and knows how to close. And he's got to, and he knows how to use electronics. Now he's the same age as yes. me about it, but he knows how to use them good. And so it's going to be, it's going to be interesting, but I, I, I would pick Jason Christie if I had to pick. Yeah, I think that's a uh, – if you're a betting man, I'd say that's a pretty good bet because when he won the Classic, if, if we remember at Hartwell, he was using forward-facing sonar every morning. It kind of – it was a balance of old school, like you said, old school meets new school. That was the mm -hmm. first time we really saw him. He's had live scope as long as anybody. He's really mm -hmm. good with it. Wouldn't yeah. shock me to see him do that at Grand, kind of mix in his old school ways at Grand and new school and, and just blow the thing out. Wouldn't shock me yeah. at all. Yeah, I think, and that's what's and that's what I like about. I love the mixture of those two things, and that's kind of the way I've been fishing the last two years is mixing those two together a lot, 
And, uh, and I feel like Grand Lake's the kind of lake you can do that. I don't feel like it's going to be a middle of the lake dominated type event. Um, and I was wrong at Santee and I was wrong at, um, at Fork and I was wrong in some places. I might be wrong again, but it'll be fun to watch next week to see what happens. <laughs> it'll be fun to see it shake. I will, uh, I will see you in Tulsa and looking forward to it as always, buddy. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for having me tonight. And thank all you guys for following, watching, and commenting. And uh, we'll see you guys in Tulsa. God bless. No doubt about it. Randy Howell, everybody, right there. That was fun, you bunch of low lifers. Getting that guy right there, one of my heroes in life, such a fantastic human being. And and uh, I saw that in the comments, man. I, I tried to, to keep up with everything y'all are saying. Uh, there's a lot of positivity about Mr. Randy Howe and, and his son Laker, for sure. He is uh he he's a fantastic young angler that's gonna be around for a long time, just like his dad has been around for a long time, and rightfully so. So I appreciate each and every one of y'all for tuning in each and every week. It means a ton to me. I'm grateful for the opportunity to get to do this and get to do all the things I get to do in this old fishing world. It's pretty cool uh, for a redneck from Southern Tennessee. I'll be honest. And, and it never, uh, it always hits me the hardest on weeks like this at the Bassmaster Classic week, getting to do the live podcast, the express boats booth. If you're around, I'm going to be there at 1 PM on Saturday. And then that night at the hunt club in Tulsa, Oklahoma, I've assembled a band of, of a uh, band of brothers, so to speak, to play music. And I appreciate all you guys uh, and gals. Hope to see y'all all there. I'll also be bouncing around the Baitworks booth. I'll be at the Pro Guide Batteries booth some. Be hanging around the Alabama Bass Trail booth some as well. So I cannot wait to see you. If you can't make it to Tulsa, I'm going to do my best. I do not know what the Wi-Fi situation is going to be like there at the Hunt Club and in the Express booth. But I'm going to do my best to try to stream both podcasts. If not, they will post up uh, early next week. Okay. I will get them posted up. I'm going to have all my cameras with me and things and, and we will, uh, see what happens. Well, I appreciate each and every one of you going to take you out with some Biloxi blues like always. And if you're going to be in Tulsa, I'll see y'all when we're living on Tulsa time. See y'all. Thank y'all. Spanish moss, a civil war ghost. Well, I'm going to leave them in the past. Any doubt.